Welcome to a new In The Mail, the series that will touch both your passion for electronics and your bank account at the same time. It's been a while since we had the mailbag video, so let's get started. The first item is this uh, compact GPS tracker system. I got this off uh, Banggood for about $24 and I noticed you can find the exact same product but with a uh, different uh, logo silk screen down here for a slightly different price. I'm assuming those are all identical inside. So the idea is you would have this uh, powered uh, by the internal battery or uh, externally f uh, with a 5 volt uh, DC voltage. It uses this uh, kind of shitty known standard connector but they do send you a cable. Uh, you might uh, place this inside your car for example. You insert a uh, SIM card inside this uh, tracker and it will um, relay GPS positioning data to your number via text messages. It might even communicate with some Chinese servers as it's often found with these um, GPS trackers. So there might be some privacy concerns with uh, this type of device but I can't confirm any of that. You would have to sniff the uh, data traffic on the uh, GSM network which is not that easy to implement. I think this should be a quad band to support uh, any network although on this particular product listing it uh, only showed uh, a three frequency band on the Banggood uh, product page but usually these GSM modules are quad band to make them universally compatible. So let's see if we can do a quick teardown of this uh, module to see how it's uh, built inside. The nice thing is that it uses um, these uh, standard uh, mobile phone batteries. So it uses one of these uh, BL5B batteries. I think it was the uh, older Nokia mobile phones that used these. And since then they are pretty much widely used in, uh, in um, uh, products like this coming from China because uh, you can easily get a hold of these um, lithium batteries. So it looks like we have a single screw under this uh, label. Let's see if we can get that undone. So this was just a cover. And um, I'm noticing there are two uh, connectors in here. This one looks like it's the SIM card uh, slot. But there is uh, another smaller connector in here and I'm thinking uh, is this a micro USB uh, card connector? I'm not sure but uh, uh, let's try that. Yes, yeah, so that definitely is a micro SD connector and uh, I'm not sure if it has some kind of logging capability so it will uh, for example uh, log uh, the GPS data to the SD card but I'm sure going to try that uh, function because it looks uh, interesting and I don't think they will have uh, spent the money on that connector um, if it's not used in some way unless this is some kind of universal board and it's also used in other uh, types of GPS trackers. Unfortunately I can't take this apart any further without uh, destroying it because uh, there is a very thin wire, that red wire in the corner that is soldered on the board and uh, that goes to this part of the case which probably contains the uh, GSM antenna and uh, I don't see a way of removing this. I think it's been glued in after being soldered so there's no way I can remove that without uh, ripping that wire and then there will be no way of resoldering it because the space is uh, too tight in there so yeah the third down will stop here but i can show you a few things um, here is the uh, gps antenna and this is the gps reception part of the circuit and uh, in here we have the uh, gsm uh, modem no info on that however it's um, completely shielded but i do see something uh, interesting on this side let me shine a flashlight in there you see those four pads in there those look like a UART port 
so it might be uh, worth probing those if you want to maybe hack this to to do something else I'm just going to use it as it is as a GPS tracker looks like it also has a microphone in here so I think you can call the device maybe listening on the uh, conversation so yeah it's it can also act as a uh, spy uh, slash bug microphone device I think I was expecting to find some kind of off-the-shelf um, uh, GSM or GPS module in there but they have a, a custom solution they added the shields on top of their custom solutions so I couldn't easily identify uh, anything in there but um, I will start using this and uh, I'll maybe do a follow-up video if I find uh, something uh, uh, wrong or something interesting with this uh, product next I got a couple of these uh, fuse tap cables these are useful for tapping a voltage from an existing fuse in a box uh, you would remove the existing fuse from a circuit you would plug in this uh, fuse tap and then on this side you can insert uh, two fuses one which was for the original circuit and the second one for this second circuit that you can top, tap off to uh, whatever you need to power from that uh, circuit so, although not a very clean solution because this will be sticking out of the uh, fuse panel and it also depends on how good of uh, contact these will make uh, it sure is um, simple to use something like this to avoid wiring a new circuit on the back of your fuse panel which might get too complicated these are pretty cheap you can get them in uh, various sizes according to the different uh, fuses uh, that exist so it might be worth keeping a couple of these uh, in your lab they also come with this type of uh, bullet connector so uh, you can crimp this to another wire and uh, extend that to wherever you need to bring uh, that circuit next I have this uh, interesting module it's an ESP8266 based module so let's get it out of the anti-static bag as you can see it contains a few bits of uh, circuitry around the ESP8266 module it looks like we got some uh, power supply stuff on this side uh, this is a DC to DC step down converter because uh, you can power this board with up to 25 volts DC we also see an optocoupler and a relay so this basically is an isolated network controlled relay because you can set up your app to run on the ESP8266 you can access it through the network and trigger this relay as you please we can see that they have isolated uh, the relay so it can be used for mains powered applications this module was around the four dollars with uh, shipping included so I thought it's uh, nice uh, that today we are able to purchase these modules for just four dollars something that would have been impossible four or five years ago but we do need to be aware that uh, they don't exactly use the good quality parts on these so these might fail over time and uh, they will also require you to spend some hours working on the uh, uh, code to run on the ESP8266 but nonetheless for those who uh, do this for pleasure it could be a very useful uh, module next up I also have something uh, related an ESP8266 prototyping board this PCB uh, offers you the footprint necessary to solder your ESP8266 module and then you have a bunch of prototyping style uh, pads that you can solder and wire as uh, required to prototype your own circuit these kind of uh, products uh, are useful when you have a circuit that uses a few extra components around the ESP8266 and you need to rapidly prototype that circuit after you have confirmed your circuit is working you can continue by designing your own uh, custom PCB at least that's how I would do it next I got this uh, brass template or at least it looks like brass but you can never be sure on uh, on uh, on that these days I think I saw this on uh, somebody else's mailbag the problem is with the delivery times I'm getting here which sometimes extend to more than two months 
I often forget where I got the idea of a product so uh, yeah I don't know where I saw this so I thought I could use this to add something to a uh, front panel or something like that with a sharpie to seal screen uh, like some uh, some annotations to a front panel however I think one of those uh, portable label printers would be better uh, I would get better results with that and with less work I should get one of those uh, pretty soon I think Lidl has those like once a year on offer uh, but uh, you have to be uh, like constantly checking their catalog to see when they uh, put that product uh, in into their uh, shop to grab it nonetheless I thought I'd uh, show you this template it might be uh, useful in uh, some occasions uh, it comes in other forms as well with letters and maybe different sizes so uh, check it out if it uh, looks interesting there will be a link in the description below next I got myself one of these uh, beefy hot glue guns because I've been using this uh, wimpy uh, small model for years and I thought it was uh, time for an upgrade I got this 120 watts model which uh, also has uh, replaceable nozzles the cost was uh, around $11 shipping included which is not bad at all and uh, it works with uh, 11 millimeter sticks which are these ones I also got them from uh, China I see it does have um, a crude temperature control on the handle I guess uh, that should be useful uh, if I want the plastic to stay liquid for longer or I could adjust uh, for a lower temperature something that's uh, really odd with this product is that it comes with the proper 2-pin European plug which is unexpected usually you get these Chinese tools with the Chinese 2-blade connector because they're made for their market anyway the old gun uh, served me for something like 8 years and uh, I hope this one will go that long as well Hitch ring seems to be a popular item among my uh, mailbag videos but that shouldn't surprise me because hitch ring is an important part of any repair or wiring job. Here I have some 70 mm wide PVC type uh, hitch ring with a 2 to 1 ratio. That means it should shrink to about 35 mm when heated. This uh, larger size is usually used for battery packs which is the main reason I got it but uh, it might also be useful for protecting various uh, small circuit modules like if you have a 40 by 40 millimeter PCB you can insert uh, a piece of this heat shrink over the PCB and you can cover it entirely protecting your board from uh, the elements it would it would be electrically isolated so there is no risk of shorting something on that board and it will also protect it from uh, water every lab should have a box with uh, different uh, size heat shrink tubing here is the box I keep with uh, a few different sizes of uh, heat shrink tubing and uh, these will also go in here and uh, I think anyone who does electronics has at least a bag of different sizes of heat shrink tubing because it's so useful my next item is a depth gauge this, I, this item is designed to be used for measuring the thread depth on tires it's good to check your, your tires because uh, you need to make sure they are within the uh, allowed depth of thread in Europe the minimum legally allowed depth is 1.6 millimeter for all passenger cars but you wouldn't want to go that low especially on winter tires where the experts recommend the minimum is 4 millimeter for correct operation I paid something like four dollars with free shipping for this uh, tool and I think it should prove useful over the years and the way you use it is very simple let's assume this is the surface of your tire you would put this um, and slide the pin into the threads of the tire and it would basically measure the height of those uh, threads right now it doesn't have any uh, battery fitted 
but that's uh, the downside of this uh, device it's battery operated and if you only use it like once a year you might discover it needs a new battery every time you use it so i guess a classical one with a uh, just a graded scale would have been better in the long term because you wouldn't need any batteries to operate it next a very simple but uh, useful item it's a magnetic uh, base clip so if you have a metallic surface you can attach this uh, clip and uh, use it for whatever you need to store there i think this is nicer than those clips that use double-sided tape because uh, those either have a shitty adhesive that will fall off in a few days or they have a really strong adhesive that will never come off this one being magnetic i think it's strong enough to hold but yet you can move it if you need to uh, I think you can get these in a few different sizes. I paid about $4 shipping included for this one, uh, which they claim it can uh, hold up to 4 kilograms with no problem. And my last item in today's video is this uh, compact gas burner. You can see these uh, used for a lot of things, even in the kitchen. I'm not sure this one is intended for a particular uh, use, but it's probably universal it's uh, empty when you get it for obvious reasons uh, during shipping safety during shipping but uh, we can get one of these uh, butane uh, canisters from your local shop and uh, you can fill it with uh, maybe four or five seconds of pushing gas in this thing should be enough so let me show you how it works this is like a the base of this uh, device should slide in there something like that and i think yeah not sure if the flame is uh, visible but you have this adjustment that basically controls the air inlet you can adjust the flame but it's not really visible right now it's that kind of uh, blue flame that you usually see on these types of uh, burners and you also have a lock in here which can keep the uh, burner on like if you set it on a stand and then you work on something on I must say that the product feels very cheap the plastic the build quality the, the smell of cheap plastic but I paid something like $8 so I guess that's okay I will be using it for when I need to heat something at high temperature maybe soldering some heavy copper pipes uh, I wouldn't recommend using this for something like heat shrink it's it's definitely too hot for something like heat shrink and uh, it's your heat shrink will burn if you uh, heat it uh, at this kind of temperatures that was all for today as usual, you'll find links in the description below for all the items shown in this video. Let me know what you think about these items in the comments and I will see you next time.